Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're gonna talk about the nuts and bolts of holding patterns, not holding pattern entries. We've done that and uh, it's an awesome video. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description. But once you are established in a holding pattern, there are really only a few things you have to remember. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Remember the entire thing is built around an inbound course, a one minute inbound course to some fix. The outbound only exists to bring you back to the beginning of that inbound course. Take for example, if you're holding at a VOR or, or some fix that's a two course, right? That'll be obvious. You're flying to the station. When you pass the station, some flag will flip. You've arrived, you turn outbound. Sometimes your inbound course is actually an outbound radial from some other VOR. You know, and that can be a bit confusing. All right, you guys, here we are holding at column intersection. And an intersection is a perfect example of how your inbound course can sometimes be a to to the intersection. And sometimes to the intersection can actually be a from from a VOR, right? And you want to get that correct. You have to absolutely get your inbound course correct. Now, remember that you always determine your holding pattern entry using your outbound heading whatever publishes the outbound. So after you figure out what your entry is, make sure you get the reciprocal of that outbound and start contemplating what you're gonna twist to the moment you cross the fix, right, on the entry. Um, here I'll show you, I have my GPS set direct to column intersection. Um, I've got the OBS mode tuned in and I've got a course of 218 because that's what the uh, inbound course is, if I come back here to the VOR, it's 218 outbound from this VOR to get me to this intersection. So when I'm direct to column right here, I've got an inbound course on my GPS. I'm inbound to the fix. You can see a two flag there. 218 is the heading and the course that takes me to the fix. But the only reason I can do that, go to the intersection, is because I have a GPS. So notice that if you switch to your VHF equipment, if I start using uh, the VHF needle, give it a second to catch up with me. Oh, really? It twisted my course? All right, 218 is what we want. Okay, now I've got a from indication. Okay, I'm still going to my fix. I'm still going to the intersection, but now I'm dealing with a from. All right? And by the way, when you practice holds, you should practice them both this way. Practice them once, you know, using your, your GPS. That's probably the way you'll do it in real life. But make sure you understand what you're looking at if you did have to go back to this idea that you have, you know, cross radials here, that you're navigating to the fix on the outbound radial from the VOR on your number one, and you're waiting for the cross radial to center to know that you're at that intersection on your number two. You should really practice that both ways. Um, and make sure, of course, too, that you have a tool like ForeFlight that gives you this kind of situational awareness. And if you're not aware of it, ForeFlight has a hold advisor where they can actually, you can actually enter holds, holding patterns here, into your flight plan. All right? So make sure you know how to use that. Make sure you know how to do it. All the tools will help, but you have to practice both the old school and the new school stuff. So once you've figured out what the inbound course is, you have to know when to start your times. Okay, if you're timing this thing, you have to start your outbound time at the same place every time. There's lots of ways to do this, but even if you just flew a standard rate turn and went wings level and started your time there, as long as you did it at the same place every time, it would work effectively for an outbound time. Remember that you're just timing the outbound segment here so that you can calibrate how long you need to make that inbound segment. We're just trying to get that inbound segment to one minute. So if it takes you a minute and a half, you only go outbound for 30 seconds next time, all right? And that kind of thing. There are other ways to determine a direct place over the earth to start that outbound time. Say for example, you have a GPS uh, and you're using a glass panel system like a G1000. If you have a bearing pointer set to the fix that you are holding at, when you make that turn and start outbound, you will see clearly when the bearing pointer hits your three o'clock or nine o'clock position, 
showing that you're perfectly abeam that fix and it's time to start the outbound. If you start the outbound at a different place every time, you'll never get the inbound timing correct, right? Okay, that makes sense, right? Like if you if you if your inbound leg is a minute and a half and you say to yourself, well, I need to shave off 30 seconds, so I'm only gonna go out for 30 seconds, but you start the outbound time 15 seconds later than you did the time before, it's not all gonna work, right? So make sure you have a good depiction of when you are a beam the fix outbound so that you can start that time. And if all else fails, standard rate turn, wings level, start it will get you pretty darn close. All right, so when do you start the inbound time? The inbound time is started when you cross the course or roll out on an intercept, whichever thing happens first. And this is usually just about the wind. Take this for example, you're flying outbound, the wind is, is off your left side. So as you make the right turn back to the course, you get a tailwind and you're blown across the course. Okay, the minute you cross it, you start your time. Let's say the wind is coming from the other side. And as you start that turn, it really holds you off and you don't actually make it all the way around to the course and you just roll out on an intercept toward it. That's when you start your time, all right? So just to review, make sure you identify the inbound course correctly. Double check it, shake it like a tree waiting for loose apples to fall off, right? What mistake did you make? Check it, double check it. If you have your inbound course correct, make sure that you have a way to know when you're a beam it to go outbound so that you can start your time at the same place every time. And remember that inbound timing starts when you cross the course or roll out on an intercept, whatever happens first. So obviously if you have an iPad and you have ForeFlight, that is a great tool to use for situational awareness. You wanna make sure you're twisting everything right, you wanna make sure you're starting all your times right. Uh, but if you can get a picture that shows you geo-referenced in relation to the holding pattern, that is a tool that I would not pass up. And we didn't talk entries in this video, but if you haven't seen it, ForeFlight also has a holding pattern entry advisor. Uh, so help you nail those entries every time. You can check all that out at foreflight.com. I have a story to tell you guys that blew my mind. I got a phone call last week from a guy that won the AOPA sweepstakes. He actually won the airplane and he wants to start flying with me. We're gonna start working on instrument training. And it's just a cool little fun fact that AOPA is giving away an airplane every year and they're not giving it to some board member, they're giving it to real pilots like you. So if you would like to enter to win this year's airplane, all you have to do is go to aopa.org sweeps. They're giving away an amazing Cessna 170 with big tires, extra horsepower up front, VGs along the wings. Get yourself a bush plane. People really win these things. You can find out more at aopa.org slash sweeps. All right, also remember to get a free trial of our Ground School app. You can try it out, for all the features. Check everything out for three full days without paying anything. If you like it, you can sign up. If you don't, you can cancel without being charged. I am confident you're gonna find things in that app that will raise your game, things you may have never heard before. Also remember, I do weekly office hours now on Patreon. If you'd like to hang out, ask me questions about your training or whatever you wanna do, I'm there every Friday. So you can join and learn more and get tons of bonus content at patreon.com slash learn TFP. Please leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of videos you'd like to see. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell, do all that YouTube stuff. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best. <laughs>